What are we doing here today? We are going on a marine treasure hunt! Train Sentosa? Yes! Tucked away in the northern corner of Sentosa is Tanjong Rimau, a beautiful rocky shore filled with marine life that is very different from what you find on sandy shores and seagrasses. Today, we are going to do a marine treasure hunt and explain to you how rocky shores like these are formed. So it may seem pretty bare and barren on these rocky shores, but they can be full of life. Just that some of them are in like sleeping beauty mode. You can actually find different types of animals depending on the area and how far it is away from the sea. Animals with a hard shell such as barnacles, oysters and shell creatures can be found slightly further away from the sea because not only can their tough shells tolerate predation better, they can tolerate being baked under the sun and also the constant splashing of water. Look at these tiny little volcanoes. They're actually barnacles and they look different than the ones that we showed in our previous episode. So they are known as volcano barnacles and apparently they need a bit more shade and a bit more moisture which is why I usually find it here, you know, it's pretty shady here and they stick well on the rocks just like any barnacles do. As we go further down, you may find more grazing animals such as onslugs, limpets and marine snails that are like feeding off the thin layer of seaweed or algae on the rocks. You can also find egg sacs of snails quite easily because the rocks provide a solid surface for the egg sacs to attach on. Oh, the big bird! The bird there? It could be a great built heron or Pacific Reef egret. I'm not too sure, it's too far for me to ID but this is how shore birds make use of the low tide situations to find food. So they go around pecking for little mollusks and crustaceans that they can eat. And yes, Singaporeans' favourite animal, the crabs, can also be found quite abundantly here. Can you spot anything here? Where? It's there! Eh? Can you see it's moving? This is a hairy crab. And why is it called hairy crab? Because it's very hairy la, yeah. And it can be found just really well, especially in this environment where, you know, there's a lot of furry-like brownish things. And they're quite abundant, just that we can't really spot them that easily. This is because crabs cannot really attach themselves to rocks so they have to either hide or blend in with the surroundings to avoid predation. Right there, there's like this cockroach looking thing. They are known as sea slaters, also known as sea cockroaches. And they're actually not insects, okay? They are closer to crabs and shrimps. They have seven pairs of legs and they run really, really fast. And everyone thought it's cockroach, but... I mean, it's sea cockroach, but it's not a cockroach. It's a chitin! So it's a type of mollusk. So it's the same group as, you know, snails and really has a powerful suction force to suck and stick onto the rock. So if you ever see one, please do not pull them off because, yeah, you will damage them. So you can see the area around the kaita is pretty bare. So just like any other grazing snails, they actually have a tongue called a radula and then they use the tongue, right? And then they go scrape off all the, all the algae off and that's their food, yeah. So you can see behind me, that's actually the tide line where the tide reaches when it's at high tide. So it's really dangerous to come here. Please come here with a guided tour, yes. As we go even lower, the rocky shore ecosystem gradually merges with the coral reef area, which then gives life to a variety of animals, including more soft-bodied ones such as sea anemones, sea cucumbers and sea stars. Hey MJ, what's yes? this weird-looking rock? This is not a rock, this is a dead animal! It's a dead mushroom coral! Huh? So corals are animals. Yes, they are similar to sea anemones in the sense that they have sting cells to capture their prey and most species actually have this algae that help them photosynthesize. This is such a nice little pool. Oh, can you see all the fish scuffling around? So even though this area is far away from the sea, right, but this is a collected pool of water and when that happens, the fish can actually survive here and you should find a lot because there's nowhere else for them to go. So they'll wait here until it comes back in. You may ask, why are rocky shores rocky? Well, that's simply because there's a lot of boulders, stones and rocks everywhere, hence it's called rocky. Ah! Hey, but this rocky shore is really special because it is formed naturally by the natural and gradual erosion of the natural cliffs behind us. You can see like the little arms of what I think is the arms of the brittle stars coming out. It's very cute, it's like it's behind the rock but you can see the, the arms of the brittle star and it's like... Ugh. Look, we spotted a few fanworms. There's the orange fanworm and the banded fanworms. So this worm thing, right, is actually on top of the animal's head. So when they come out like that, that's where they will modify the currents to bring in water and food. And they have like a longer tube, which is all hidden beneath the rocks here. And as you can see, the cliff is pretty bare with no vegetation. And this indicates that the waves are actually actively eroding the rocks. And this part of the island is actually receding inwards. So this also gives rise to naturally formed caves that you can find here on Tanjong Rimau. 
If you want to know more about the geological formation and history of Tanjung Rimau, you may visit Sentosa's Geology Gallery where you can learn more about the geological formation of Tanjung Rimau and Singapore. Alright, tide's coming in, so we've got to end this episode right now. If you guys want to check this place out, do contact nature at sentosa.com.sg for more information because this area is only accessible via guided tours by Sentosa to protect the environment and also to protect your safety. That's all for today! Just keep thinking!